This program is designed for the exclusive purpose of marshalling all of your body's energy and resources onto the side of maximum growth in your major muscle groups. I am going to suggest that everyone start with what I have determined through vast personal experience as a trainer works quite well for most. And if after finishing three cycles of the four workout program, your strength hasn't increased significantly, that you switch to the consolidation program as described in the booklet that came along with these tapes. You will start by training once every four days on a four workout protocol. So if you start on a Monday, that means you wouldn't train again till Friday. After Friday, you wouldn't train again till Tuesday, then Saturday and so forth, once every four days. Write down the words day one, close to the upper left-hand corner of your paper, and then write the word chest. Next to it, the number one. Exercise number one for the pecs will be pec deck for six to 10 reps to failure. If you reach 10, but you see you might go to 13 reps to failure, don't stop at 10, go to 13. And at the other end, if you see by rep three, you won't reach even six reps, but only four or five, don't stop and reload. Get four or five, the next time you'll likely get six to ten. And if you don't have access to a pec deck, then flat bench dumbbell flies or cable crosses may be substituted. Directly underneath exercise one, write out the word superset, and directly underneath that, the number two. Exercise number two for the pecs will be the incline press, preferably on a machine such as the Smith, Hammer, Icarian, or Nautilus. If you don't have any machine for the incline press, you may perform either regular free weight barbell incline presses or incline dumbbell presses. Exercise number two should be performed for one to three reps, not six to ten, one to three reps. And make a parenthetic note next to the incline press. Use a fairly close hand grip. Your hand should be slightly closer than shoulder width. What should be wide are not your hands, but your elbows. Flare your elbows way back away from your torso toward your ears. And you'll feel all the stress go into the pecs. And for beginners, a superset means two sets. One set of each of two different exercises, where the performance of one is followed immediately by the other. As with pec decks, supersetted, or followed immediately by incline press. All right, now write down the word back, still under day one. Write down the word back. And then the number one itself. Exercise number one for the back will be close grip, palms up, pull downs, six to ten repetitions. Close grip, palms up, pull downs. Directly underneath that, write down the number two, which will be regular style, not stiff legged, but regular deadlifts. There is no superset here, by the way. There will be no superset unless I specify. And where there is no superset, you may rest as long as necessary, but no longer. Don't overcomplicate this issue. Use your common sense. Let your breathing slow down. And as soon as you feel ready to resume training, do so. Perform five to eight reps as close to failure as you're willing to go. If you have problems with your lower back, shrugs may be substituted and do six to ten reps to failure. That's all on day one. Just four total sets. Then 96 hours or four days later is day two. Write down the words day two. On day two, you will train legs. The first exercise is leg extensions, supersetted with exercise number two, leg press. Now, just to the right of the words leg extension and leg press, using a common bracket or a parenthesis, indicate that each is to be performed for eight to 15 reps. If you don't have a leg press, substitute squats, preferably in a Smith machine. You're not going to be doing leg curls for a while, just because an exercise is done traditionally for a certain muscle doesn't mean, of course, that you are morally or legally bound to do it all year round. Besides, the hamstrings will receive sufficient stimulation for now from the deadlift and the leg press and the squat. After the leg extension, leg press, superset, take a rest, go drink some water, walk around the gym for a minute or two, then finish up quite simply with a set of standing calf raises 12 to 20 reps. And that is it for day two. 96 hours, or four days after legs, is day three. On day three, you'll train delts and arms. Write down the word delts. For delts, you start out with dumbbell laterals. Some people call them side raises, six to ten reps. After a brief rest, 
but no superset here. Proceed to exercise number two for delts. Either bend over dumbbell laterals, or if one is available, sit in a pec deck backwards and work your rear delts six to ten reps here too. After delts, you'll work your arms. You might write down the word arms. Exercise number one for arms is barbell curls, six to ten. Six to ten reps with barbell curls. And that is a straight bar, not an easy curl bar. Easy curls do not work the biceps. They work the brachialis on the outer part of the arm. Do straight bar barbell curls. Exercise number two for the arms is tricep press downs with either a straight bar or a V-bar, but do not use a rope. Do not use a rope, either a straight bar or a V-bar. Six to ten reps for the tricep press down. And if a press down machine is not available, perform one set of lying French presses for six to ten reps. Immediately after the press down, in superset fashion, proceed to dips between parallel bars for three to five reps to failure. Three to five. If you can do more than five reps with your body weight, then add weight. And if you can't do any positive or full range dips, then place a chair or bench between the dip bars, stand up into the straight arm locked elbow position, and lower yourself in negative fashion, taking several seconds to reach the bottom, then stand up on the chair into the straight arm position and do it again. When you can perform up to 10 negative dips, with each rep taking several seconds to complete, you should be able to do regular full range dips. Okay, 96 hours later is day four. Legs, yes, legs again. This time you will start with leg extensions and follow immediately in superset fashion with Smith machine or free weight squats, but don't do hack squats unless absolutely forced to do so. Hack squats are not very productive and they stress the knees inordinately. You will perform the leg extensions differently this time, using approximately 30 pounds more than the last time when you perform the leg extension with the leg press. You will do but one positive rep, lifting the lower legs until they are in the straight leg lock knee position. You will hold that position statically. This is called a static hold rep. The weight will be sufficiently heavy so that you're limited to holding the straight leg lock knee position for approximately 10 to 25 seconds. Lower the leg slowly in controlled negative fashion, not hyper slow or imperceptibly slow, but under strict control all the way down to the bottom. And make sure that you keep your buttocks planted firmly in the seat as there is a tendency to want to come up off the seat when your thighs are burning and torque it down. Do not torque it down, lower with the strength of the thigh muscles alone. Then proceed immediately to the squat and perform 8 to 15 reps to failure. Take a rest for a couple minutes, go get some water, and finish once again with a set of standing calf raises 12 to 20. And then four days later, you start over with day one and repeat the four workout protocol as already described. Whenever I have a superset listed, as with pec deck and incline press, or leg extension leg press, or leg extension squat, start the warm-up on the second exercise. For instance, when performing the leg extension squat superset, if you start with the leg extensions without having first warmed up the glutes, spinal erectors, and so forth, by doing a couple of sets of squats first off, as you finish the leg extension and you're heading to the squat, you'll say to yourself, but my goodness, I forgot the warm-up for the squat. Same thing with the incline press and the leg press. By warming up on the second exercise first, you cover all your bases in terms of a warm-up. And you'll also have the weight set on that exercise so that you may perform a true superset, where one exercise is followed immediately by another with no rest in between. And please, don't change the sequence of exercises I've listed. Everything I've given you here was for a good reason, which is not to say that you can't periodically change exercises, although I would be hesitant, as the exercises listed are all the best ones for the muscles involved. And don't make the mistake of gauging or evaluating the success of any one of these workouts by the standard of feeling, whether or not you get sore or achieve a pump. This program is designed for the exclusive purpose of marshalling all of your body's energy and resources onto the side of maximum growth in your major muscle groups. Any exercise you might add 
beyond what is listed here will merely subtract from maximum growth in the major muscle groups. I see certain people who have been training at Gold's Gym in Venice, California for hours every day for years. If achieving a pump was a surefire indication that growth was stimulated, these people would have 28-inch arms by now as they get pumped every time they work out. The pump, of course, is only temporary and does not indicate that growth was stimulated. And if getting sore was necessary, I never would have won a physique title as I almost literally never got sore, usually only after a layoff. You can only evaluate the success of any one of these workouts by whether or not you're stronger the next time you perform that workout. So keep a training journal as described in the value added booklet.